Hi, my name is Duffy Robbins. Thanks for letting me be a part of your group this day. Hey, uh, I, I think one of my favorite uh, memories of raising my kids uh, was my girls, two girls. Uh, love, Aaron and Katie loved to go to the playground near our house. This was just one of their favorite things to do. And one of their favorite places on the playground uh, was to go to the merry-go-round. Now, uh, you know, they're, the, what they liked to do on the merry-go-round was um, they would get on there, and then my job on the merry-go-round was just to, just to kind of become for them a human piston, you know, just like <laughs> just get this thing going faster and faster and faster, and they loved it, and it was, it was kind of a riot, actually. These little girls on this merry-go-round, just kind of a blur of motion and speed, and, and I'd hear, you know, these... Uh, giggles and see this blur of curly hair and uh, and I never rode with them of course because I said daddy it's not as much fun uh, when you're vomiting but but I remember one day we were out there on the merry-go-round and um, and I don't know I had them up to like 5,000 rpms and and it was just great and they're laughing and 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 I think it was my younger daughter uh, Katie uh, must have thought to herself gosh this is amazing that dad would be for us a, a human piston and so uh, she decides in her little head, um, I am going to embrace him on the next lap. Uh, now, uh, not being fully familiar with the laws of physics, in particular the principle of inertia, uh, I guess it didn't dawn on her what might happen if she were to fall through with that plan because she was about four years old. Uh, she just thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hug Daddy uh, on the pass. Um, and, and, and in fact, I actually, uh, as I think back about the incident, uh, I never saw it coming. I remember the last thing was uh, I looked up and uh, I saw uh, approaching at a high rate of speed this kind of horizontal object, a little white, fleshy. Uh, and, and next thing I knew, uh, my daughter, my four-year-old, had clotheslined me. Uh, I mean, actually right at about the neck. I just was absolutely just flipped back. And my lip was cut in two places. Uh, my children uh, howling with laughter. Uh, in fact, if you think about it, be praying for Katie because ever since um, ever since she did that, Santa hasn't visited her. But but one thing we learned that day uh, it was an interesting lesson. And the lesson is this: uh, it's really hard to hug a moving target. It's hard to hug a moving target. I'm always uh, intrigued when I talk to people about saying, I really have a hard time connecting with God, or I just don't feel very close to God. Uh, I, I'm, wondering, um, I'm wondering if one of the ways that we could probably uh, deepen and improve our, our relationship with God is simply by slowing down long enough to allow him to hug us. You know, there's an interesting passage in the book of Psalms, right in the middle of the Bible, the book of Psalms, Psalm chapter 46, verse 10, where the psalmist writes these words. He says, be still, be still, and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Because it's funny, I, I mean, I always thought, and maybe, a lot, maybe you do, that like to know God, you gotta, you gotta like do stuff. You know, you gotta, you gotta, um, you know, Read your Bible really hard. You gotta, you gotta, uh, you know, close your eyes just right, and and hold your hands just right, and and burn incense, and 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 all kinds of cool stuff, and chant things. But but it seems like what the psalmist is saying is like one of the first steps in the process is simply being still, being willing to listen, and that's hard. It's really hard, I think, you know, uh, in our culture today because there's so much noise and so much distraction. And uh, in my life, I don't know about you, but I've, I've either got music playing or a podcast or people talking to me or the TV on. And, and, and what I've discovered uh, in the midst of the busyness and the dizziness of this merry-go-round that we call life is that one of the first steps, one of the best ways to put myself in a place and a space where I can hear God is to simply take time to be still. Now, now when I say be still, that doesn't mean you're doing nothing. Um, it, it's like when you're trying to listen to somebody. You know, you, you sort of focus your eyes and you nod your head and you, you maybe kind of uh, clear the deck a little bit and, and just focus on them. When I say be still before God, I'm kind of talking about um, intentional intentional stillness. It's just taking time to really listen, really be aware.
And then in that position of stillness, then what I want to do is say, okay, Lord, talk to me. And one of the best ways to do that is to spend some time with him in the word. And you go, well, I'm not, like, I don't know what that looks like. I'm not a priest. I don't know how to read the Bible. When I read it, it just feels weird. Um, let me give you a couple of very simple, practical steps so that you can practice stillness before God. First of all, find a place. Find a place. Um, it, it's different for different people. Uh, maybe, maybe it's going to be in your room. Maybe it's going to be bedtime. Maybe it's in study hall. Uh, maybe for you, it, it's on the bus riding to school. All of your buses, like my bus, uh, th there was so much jarring and bouncing and racket that, uh, that you'd have to read each verse 10 times. But, but, but whatever your space is, you find that space. That's number one. Try to find a space where you can have, you know, Kind of some quiet, kind of some, kind of some place where it's easy to practice stillness. And then secondly, I recommend you get a time. If, if you said to your friend, hey, let's meet, and they said, okay, the next question you're going to ask each other is when? When do you want to do that? Because you realize that if I'm going to really connect with my friend, I've got to have a time. And so maybe just, just it, it might be, you know, for some people, it's early in the morning before they go to school. Uh, you might go, no way, dude, that's not me. I don't like getting up early, and I get that. Uh, I wish that I loved getting up early, that every morning I could so spiritual that I say, you know what, uh, uh, every time my eyes open, when I hear the alarm, I go, good morning, Lord. But I'm like you. I, I get up, and I go, good Lord, it's morning. And, and maybe for you, morning's not a good time. Maybe for you, uh, uh, morning is a good time to think about hell and judgment. Maybe for you it's nighttime, right? Uh, or maybe, as I said, maybe it's during study hall. Maybe it's when you get home after school. Uh, but try to find not just a place, but try to get a time, a regular time, uh, where, you can, where you can say, okay, Lord, I want to practice stillness. I want to listen to you. And then the third uh, sort of idea that I want to suggest, if you really want to practice intentional stillness, is to, is to find a kind of a method or, or, or a, a system. You go, well, what are you talking about? Well, in other words, if you just say, you know what, I'm going to spend some time with uh, God, and I'm going to start kind of reading the Bible from the front and kind of work through the uh, table of contents and maybe some of the publishing information, maybe cruise through a few maps. And, you know, that you're probably going to lose your appetite for that pretty quickly. And, and, and you're, you're a youth pastor or your youth leader or, uh, or, you know, you can even find some of the stuff online. Your pastor, somebody can say, you know what, that's, that's great. I love that you're willing to do that. I love that you're going to practice intentional stillness. Well, why don't you do this? Here's a little system I use, and it might be some people read like one proverb every day, each day of the month, because there's 31 of them, and it's, it takes you right through the whole deal. Some people read five psalms a day. That's a lot. That might be too much to start with, but because that actually takes you through the book of psalms in a, in a month, because there's about 150 of them. And then some people say, well, I'm just going to read a chapter a day. And, and that's a great thing. Maybe start in the Gospel of Luke. Don't start at the front of the book, but start at the front of Jesus' story. In Luke chapter 1, just read through the Gospel of Luke. And there, there, there are tons of different methods and systems, and there's none of them that are really bad. But, but I really recommend that if you're going to practice intentional stillness, it'll be good to kind of get, a, get some way that you can sort of do it on a day-by-day -day basis. Uh, the bottom line of all this is, is not so that you can, at the end of the day, go, uh, okay, check. That, that you know, God calls the role. Who has practiced stillness a day? Uh, Duffy Robbins, present. Or he's missed four days straight. I'm ticked off. It's, it's so that you can, in the midst of the busyness and the dizziness of life, experience the wonder and the joy and I'll even say the intimacy of being embraced by your heavenly Father. It's hard to hug a moving target. Thanks for listening.